This is Echo 3, and let's discuss counter-rotating propellers as we build my take on a K-130 cargo plane. Let's get started building our plane. Since this is to be a cargo plane, I'm using the Mark III parts for the cockpit and the body. This is not going to be one of the fancy replica planes like the F-35s that many capitalist players on the forums are fond of making. I am using the basic FAT-455 main wing for the main wings, the FAT-455 tail fin for the vertical stabilizer, and a couple tail fins to act as elevators. Since I'm planning on using the R121 turbo shaft engine, I'll use the built-in liquid fuel storage in the wings. just as soon as we get them all straightened up here. The offset tool is great for placing the wheels. I'm using the body of the aircraft as a square surface for attaching the gear so I know they'll be straight. I'm using the offset tool to check to make sure the landing gear are level with each other. And since I've already tested this design, I'm tweaking the settings on the rear landing gear to what I found works best. By placing one fuel tank and engine, I can set it up as needed and then clone those pieces. For the engine, I am reducing their size by half. I also like to bind the motor power to the RCS key so that I can turn off the engines and on when I need to. I'll pick up the fuel tank and the engines and set their attachment to mirror, then place them on the body of the plane rather than the wings. Just like with the landing gear, this will ensure that the engines are perfectly straight. I can clone the engines again to give the plane four engines. And just like the rear landing gear, I use the offset tool to make sure my engines line up with each other. Now, for the propellers themselves. This is what players seem to struggle with. For this style of plane, I will need to remove engines from symmetry so I can set up counter-rotating propellers. I found that after placing the propellers on the one side, they work best by copying and flipping the propeller to place on the other side. Also, remember to switch the propellers and engines to the counterclockwise rotation. As with any aircraft, remember to check your center of lift and center of mass. The further forward the center of mass is from the center of lift, the more stable and less maneuverable the plane will be. A plane with the center of mass in front of the center of lift is difficult to fly, but a plane with the center of mass behind the center of lift flies once. Adding the Cow 1000 is what is going to make all of these propellers work together. You can see the single engine propeller tutorial for more tips on building propeller planes. The play position of the Cow 1000 has been bound to the throttle. Next, I'm binding the angle of the propeller blades to the cow so that the throttle will control the pitch angle of the propeller blades. For this plane, the zero throttle setting will set the pitch angle to negative 90 degrees or perfectly flat. The propellers will provide no thrust at this angle. Full throttle is set to minus 35 degrees. This all translates into the throttle controlling directly the speed of the airplane. I will double check the pitch angle controls by setting their position with the cow. The paint on the side of the propeller should be forward and the white strips on the propeller should be the leading edge.
After double checking my propellers, it looks like they are all set correctly. We look about all set. We'll have Jeb and Val in the cockpit and meet Bill and Bob on the runway for a little surprise. Bill and Bob wanted to check out an interesting rock, taking their rover there. I know those scientists and engineers wanted to look at rocks, but we could be flying. One last double check and things look good. And here's a little surprise. Using the robotic parts, I was able to put a Clampatron Jr. to attach the rover to the plane. This plane has lots of power and is able to get up to speed quickly. I did some testing of the plane and its performance was similar to that of a C-130 Hercules, although I estimate its range at only 900 kilometers. But on Kerbin, that's pretty good. If you've seen any of my other videos, you'll know that I don't use the SAS to stabilize my planes in flight. The trim keys are sufficient to keep the plane steady. I even left the computer for over five minutes to come back and the plane was still on course. Oh, looks like we're getting close to the landing site that Bob and Bill wanted to check out. Other than the runways, and the flats of Minimus, most of Kerbin and the other planets and moons are tricky to find quality landing sites. Ooh, yeah, kind of a rough landing here, but we'll be all right. We got Jeb and Val in the cockpit. And another fine landing by Jeb and Val. Those two really are great. Okay, Bob and Bill, we're on the ground. You can gather science from the lithosphere. They're going to take their rover out and check out some kind of rock. I don't know what they have in mind. Wow, what is this? An anti-gravity rock. I guess this was worth the trip.